Good afternoon and welcome to your science review with Mr. Blades. Today we're going to be doing a projectile motion problem that includes an inclined angle. So let's take a look at the picture. Now from my picture you can tell that our problem statement is that we have an object launched from a 30 meter platform at 25 meters per second at a 30 degree angle. So let's go ahead and figure out how long it takes for it to reach its top of its flight, how high it'll get, how long it's in the air total, what the displacement is at that maximum height, how fast it's moving when it hits the ground, and how far it travels. All right, so now when we're doing a problem like this that includes an angle, the first thing I like to do is calculate my Vx and my Vy, Vx and Y components of my velocity. Now, we've talked about this a bunch in class, and calculating our Vx and Y is going to be equal to our velocity times the cosine or sine of our angles. Now, for our Vx, putting this into our calculator, we get 21.66 meters per second. And for our Vy, we get 12 and a half meters per second. Now, that tells us how fast the object is moving in the y and x directions. OK, so let's move on. Now, the first thing we're going to do after this is we are going to calculate, actually, this delta y apex. We do that, I like to do that, one, because I like to start in the y axis and because this particular piece is the easiest. So let's go ahead and start. Now, when an object flies up and begins to turn around when it hits its apex, it will, it will stop for just a moment. All right? It will slow and then stop at that apex and then turn around and come back. So at our apex, our final velocity in the y direction is going to be zero. That leaves us with negative vi equals 2a times d. Now, this vi is equal to our uh, vy over here. That's how fast it was launched in the upward direction. So 12.5 squared negative equals 2 times negative 9.8 times whatever our distance is. Divide both sides by 2 times negative 9.8. And we end up with our delta D is equal to, our delta D is equal to 7.97 meters. So we can go ahead and write that in, 7.97 meters. All right, so that's the first part we have here. But next, what we're going to do is try to figure out this time to the apex. Now this one's pretty easy. We just use delta T is equal to delta V over A. And just like we talked about before, our final velocity in the y direction when the ball hits its apex is going to be zero. So our delta V is negative 12.5 divided by our acceleration, negative 9.8, which gives us a delta T to the apex of 1.28 seconds. So I can go ahead and write that over here, 1.28 seconds. Now, we're going to try to figure out how fast the object is moving when it hits the bottom, this VFY. Now, we're going to reuse our favorite equation, this guy right here, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. Now, in this case, now we know how far the object has fallen from the apex all the way to the bottom. And we know that the initial velocity, when it begins its fall, will be zero. So now we're just solving for this Vf squared equals 2 times negative 9.8 times 7.97 plus our original 30, or 37.97 meters. That gives us a Vf squared of 744.12. And if we square root both sides, we end up with a V final in the Y direction of 27.28 meters per second. Now let's go ahead and write that in. 27.28 meters per second. Now we're going to go ahead and try to figure out this total time. And again, we're going to use our old friend delta T equals delta V over A. Now we have figured out what our final velocity is as it hits the ground. We already know our acceleration. And we end up with negative 27.28 meters per second divided by negative 9.8 meters per second per second. 
And that gives us a fall time of delta T fall equals 2.78 seconds. Now, you may be thinking that our total time in the air is this 2.78. However, we actually flew up for 1.28 seconds and then flew back down for 2.78 seconds. We're going to have to add those together to get how long it was up and then back down too. So when we add those together, we end up with 4.06 seconds. All right. Now, it seems like we're pretty much done, and we are pretty close to done. But we need to figure out how far from the platform the ball gets. So we're going to take our total time here, multiply it by our Vx in that direction, and that's how we're going to get it. Written out, we have our delta x equals v delta t. We should remember this from our constant velocity unit. So our velocity in the x direction is 21.66 meters per second, multiplied by our total time in the air, or 4.06 seconds. Now, if we punch both of those into our calculator, we end up with a total horizontal displacement of 88.02 meters. That's the last bit we have to write in here, 88.02 meters. We've solved for the time it takes to go up. We've solved for the total time it's in the air. We've solved for the change in y up to the top. We've solved for how fast it's moving in the y direction as it plummets to the ground, and our horizontal displacement over that entire period. Now, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you in class, and go Strohs.